Hello everybody, it is a beautiful day today. Imagine that, there's no rain. Pretty awesome. The cows are all sitting here waiting to go outside. Let this small group out. We need some extra nets for the field we're going to, so we're taking these ones down. The sheep grazed it pretty well and they've moved on to a new pasture and uh, next we're going to be growing hay on here so we don't need them here anymore we're all loaded up here we've got everything but we got to get this fence done because the sheep are going to go up there tomorrow this is probably the farm's steepest sheep pasture and it's probably one of the fields with the highest wolf danger there's a pretty good forest up above us there the majority of it used to be metal netting but we're switching all to electric in the second episode, I mentioned that Eric had gotten new nets, and I said that these new nets were for the wolves. This might surprise some, but there are wolves in Switzerland. When I first moved to Switzerland, I knew that there had been wolves in the past, but I was pretty surprised to find that they were still here. When I think of a place that large carnivores like wolves would live, I think of a vast area of wilderness, like in Alaska or Canada. Switzerland's not that. There just isn't that much wilderness here. I mean, everywhere you go in Switzerland, there are people. And there's restaurants on the top of like every mountain. Now, of course, not every mountain, but you get my point. It just really doesn't seem like a place wolves would live. And for a while, there were no wolves in Switzerland. By the 1950s, they had been hunted to extinction. Later on, laws protecting wildlife, including wolves, were put in place. Then in the 90s, a few wolves crossed from Italy over to Switzerland and started living. In 2012, the first wolf pack was documented here. The wolves were back. And the return of the wolves is kind of a controversial thing in Switzerland. There's some Swiss that really, really like the wolves, and there's some Swiss that really, really don't. Now, I don't think that wolves are this evil animal that needs to be wiped from the face of the earth. But I think when we sit down and look at the numbers, there's some good reason for concern. According to Cora, an organization that tracks wolf activity in Switzerland, in 2012, there was just one wolf pack made up of a few wolves. As of 2022, there are 18 wolf packs and another five on the borders with other countries. There are 240 wolves living in Switzerland. And the problem isn't the number of wolves. The problem is the livestock they kill. In 2021, wolves killed 853 livestock in Switzerland alone. There is no official number for 2022, but some are saying it's over a thousand. That's a lot of livestock. It's mostly smaller animals like sheep and goats, but there have been some calves and smaller cows killed as well. We just hit lunch. We're gonna move around the cows real quick. Bring uh, these ones in and these ones in and let the other ones out. Kind of do a little rotation there. Cool. Hey, do must draw some again. Really, Hicks, grow to me. Nay. The steep rise in the wolf population and the number of livestock killed has many farmers worrying that their animals might be next. The Swiss government has been compensating farmers for their lost animals. Still, farmers spend their entire lives taking care of their livestock. They actually care about them and no farmer wants to fall asleep at night knowing that his animals might be killed by the morning. The answer so far has been to fortify, like we're doing today, changing all of our old fences for these new, taller, all-electric fences 
that wolves can't easily jump over or go underneath. Farmers are also using guard animals like dogs and donkeys. Like I'd mentioned in episode two, smaller animals like sheep and goats are normally pastured on the steepest, most difficult to get to terrain. This is also the most difficult terrain to fortify. Many Alps are so jagged and rocky, it would be impossible to make an electric fence that wolves couldn't get through. One solution to this problem has been to bring all of your animals into a smaller, secure pen for the nights when the wolves are most active. Now this adds a lot of work for the farmers. They've got to go get their sheep and bring them in for the night, but maybe it'll also keep them safe. It also kind of brings up the question though, if farmers successfully adapt and are able to keep their animals safe from the wolves, what are the wolves going to eat? The obvious answer is other wildlife like deer or gemse. But can Swiss wildlife really take a thousand losses a year? That just seems like a really high number and it leaves me wondering, is the wolf population kind of artificially high because they have an unlimited food supply from the farmers. They can just eat as many fat sheep as they'd like. Which kind of brings up another question. If the wolves are just living off of fat, juicy sheep that can't run very fast, are they really wild animals? Are they more like zoo animals? Now, I'm not anti-wolves. I don't think all of the wolves should be killed or anything like that. But I also think there's gonna have to be some recognition that Switzerland isn't a massive wildlife area. Even the wild parts of Switzerland are quite developed. It's maybe not the best place for a large wolf population. There we go. It's finished up here. All down there is finished. Down there is finished. And this is also finished. Just a tiny little bit at the uh, entrance and we'll be done. Oh yeah. Oh, you can see a little bit of the Alps there. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to watch the next episode on the Alps, the fields, not the mountains, then subscribe. See you next time.